Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Well, let's get on our feet and just give the Lord a shout. Give the devil a headache. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Let's just lift our hands and just abide in the shadow of the Almighty today. Father, we declare miracles today because you desire to show your glory to the world. Lord, you desire for your people to be signs and wonders. Lord, this is for the glory of your name. And Father, we thank you for what you did last night, what you plan to do today. Lord, we cooperate with what you have designed for each of our lives today. Does everybody say today? Now faith is. Say that. Now faith is. Father, we come with expectation, Lord, of what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we are here on assignment for the kingdom of God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in this earth. In each one of us, Lord, for your glory today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, um, be seated just, for, yeah, blow the shofar. A shout of victory. Be seated for a moment. Let me introduce you to some people that you know, most of you know. Maurice Scalar, a famous prophet of God, violinist. Played uh, for Benny Hinn for many years, and now he's with us. And Benny Hinn's with us, too. <laughs> but Maurice and Carolyn, they operate a house of prayer in the Galilee area in the north. And, of course, a lot of stuff happening up there right now. And uh, we've been partnering in that ministry for over 20 years. Amen. And um, this uh, house of prayer now has been transitioned into a house of refuge as we've created a safe place for displaced Israelis since the uh, the war and also IDF members who come for respite and we're caring for them we're feeding them caring for them and making a place and this place is a place of refuge too for the last days and so uh, we just thank God for that opportunity Maurice and Carolyn, they uh, travel all, all over the world right now, and but they live right here at uh, Christian Retreat. And That's right. Yes, absolutely. Bring everybody in. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Something good is going to happen to you. You know who used to say that, yeah. right? Oral Roberts used to say that. Um, wow. We live in very exciting times. I sure am glad I'm in the light, not in the dark. <laughs> you know, I feel like sharing a testimony of what happened at the uh, at the breakfast when a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, well, uh, we were given a very uh, uh, a gold piece, a fifty dollar gold piece. I'm not going to, you know, and. It was for the purpose of, uh, for Israel and for the orphans and the homeless and, uh, you know, to help. Uh, so what we did, we got the best. We found where to, to cash it in. And so, so we sent it right along to Brian. T talk about him a little bit. Um. Brian, uh, he, he takes care of the Holocaust survivors and the orphans in uh, Netanya. And he's asked me to come and play my heart before and to dance with the Holocaust survivors. Well, we're so special. Help them in the future yeah, after the so, war or whatever, whenever yeah. God wants us. So be encouraged, though. Keep your eyes on Him. Where are your eyes? Can I share just a little bit? Okay, where are your eyes? Well, the Bible says our eyes should be in two places. First of all, uh, Yeshua said, look, look at the Lord. And the Bible says, look 
with eyes of faith, keep your eyes upon him. But there's something else that we're supposed to keep in our eyes on. John uh, chapter 4 says, uh, Yeshua said, look on the fields. Say, look on the fields. Look on the fields. So we're supposed to look there too. Look on the fields for they are white to harvest. So we have to have our eyes not on the devil and all the balagan and all the bad things that are happening. Keep your eyes, first of all, upon, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. You, got, you have to fix your, and the Bible says also, set your heart on where? Eternal things, not temporary things. You're just passing through, and God's shaking everything that can be shaken. But we are planted, our feet are upon the rock. And I shall, I shall, I shall not be moved. <laughs> so you have to you have to be constantly, when the storms are raging, Peter, as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord, he could walk on the water. Come on and walk on the water. Remember that old song with me? Yeah. You will not fail because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. All right, now, I, I'm not supposed to. Anyway, what I'm trying to say to you <laughs> is be encouraged. Yeshua said you would have tribulation in this world, but I like when but in the Bible means something good is going to come after that. <laughs> but. Greater is he. Amen? So we, we have the victory. Thanks be unto God who every once in a while gives us the victory. <laughs> Always gives us the victory through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. So, amen. Be encouraged. Let's stand right now and let's, let's open. We got Bruce and Lisa, I think, coming and uh, Cheryl. And uh, we'll be just opening this uh, session today. But uh, Maurice and Carolyn have seen many miracles under their ministry. And, uh, you know, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Take somebody's hand. Father, as uh, we're standing here with Maurice and Carolyn, Maurice, a Messianic, Jewish, uh, born-again, spirit-filled believer, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray, Lord, that you will open the eyes of your ancient people that they might know their Messiah, Yeshua, HaMashiach, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Holy Spirit. Lord, as you move upon that nation, Lord, in the earth realm, Lord, also open up the spirit realm, O oh God, to let your kingdom come and your will be done. So, Father, we just uh, dedicate this day now to you for your will and your purpose to come to pass. Lord, for each one of your people. And Lord, we thank you in advance. We believe. Say, I believe. I believe. Lord, that you are able to do abundantly above and beyond all that we can think or ask according to and because of the power, your power, that's at work in each one of us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Pastor John is on the piano. Do you have a microphone there, Brother John, whatever you've got, open us up with something. All right. Yeah, hallelujah. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Amen. I want to say thanks. Thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. My soul, my soul is at rest. Oh, Lord. I give you thanks, 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 I give you thanks for all you, all you've done for me, Lord. I am so blessed, my soul is at rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks, come on, tell him today. give you thanks for all you've done, all you've done for me, Lord. I am so blessed. My 
My soul is at rest, oh Lord. I give you thanks one more time. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul is at rest, oh Lord. I give you thanks, oh Lord, I give you thanks from the bottom of my heart, Lord, oh Lord, I give you thanks. And this is another song you probably don't need the, the book for, even though it was written, I wrote it several years ago, it's pretty simple, first part anyway. Thank you, Lord. Only to you. Only to you. I lift my hands in worship. Oh, Lord. I lift my hands in worship. Only to you. Only to you. Only to you, oh Lord, I lift my hands, I lift my hands in worship, only to you, only to you, only to you, oh, I give my heart. I give my heart in worship only to you. No one else but you, Lord, only to you. Only to you, oh Lord. I lift my hands in worship only to you. What key am I in? Be welcome in this place, Lord. You alone are worthy, Lord. We could do nothing without you, Lord. Whatever expectation we have today, Lord. So many that need to be healed spiritually, mentally, emotionally. But Lord, You're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask for you to think, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we give you glory, Lord. Say this again. Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance, like the fragrance after the rain, Jesus, Jesus, oh, him, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim that kings and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something. Give our all because we trust you, Lord. Whatever needs to be done this day, Lord God, in each heart, Lord God, whether it be physically, Lord, or financial, mental, emotionally, Lord, you are the answer, Lord. We bless your name. Just welcome him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor John. You can be seated for a moment. Hallelujah. Uh, just before the Billy Burke team comes out, let me just remind you, if you're here for the first time this morning on your seat, little brochure of um, the speaker schedule, the guest speakers that are coming in uh, throughout the winter season, and just invite you to take that home with you. And also, um, and by the way, Sunday morning, that's day after tomorrow, uh, I'm going to invite um, as many of you as want to just give a short testimony. I'm going to make it a testimony service and show you some scripture about how important your testimony is. I think uh, the, the speaker for the class this morning was taking you to Revelation 12, 11, that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your testimony. And uh, I just feel like uh, we need to make sure when God does something for you, even in the least amount, and I'm believing for the Procknell family here this, this week, that God's going to do something uh, that's uh, miraculous. But when you see any movement towards that answer, talk about it, declare it. That gets God's attention. And um, also, just to make you aware of this and men if uh, you got your spouse next to you remember valentine's day is coming soon and you'll be mightily blessed if you remember that but we've got an annual valentine's uh dinner uh day dinner it's on monday a week uh, from now on the 12th it'll be in the uh, majesty room here and it's a great event uh fellowship we got some uh, the Browder family coming uh, to provide music and and um, good good eating for that dinner. A little flyer in the back there, just um, next to the information desk there. So, just information. Also, at your seat, there's an envelope. We'll give you an opportunity to sow into the ministry here at the end of the session. Yes, good to see the team here, Bruce and Lisa and Cheryl here, and. Um, just anointed of God, you know, music and worship is really a part of what God does and works in our life. And so let's just um, allow the presence of God to prepare us for what he wants to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you stand with us again? I know you've been singing a little bit this morning. Come on, stand if you would. We're going to praise the name of the Lord today. Amen. Oh, praise the name 
Thank you, Jesus. sing it to him. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You As we bless your holy name. Come on, lift it to him now. For you, you are great. You, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You. Do you know how good you feel right now this time of the day in this group starting out your day with praises? Imagine if you did this by yourself every day. 
Did you ever think that you're here in a group to learn how to do this more often alone? That would change your whole culture. You would be walking into a, a preset atmosphere every day. You know, I mean, whether there's musicians or keyboards or whatever. I mean, Jesus never had a praise team. <laughs> I never seen the Apostle Paul turn around and say, Then sings my soul. But yet they, yet they, they were in that constant atmosphere. It's because they, they lived a life of preparation. It wasn't a place to visit. It was, he was part of them. He, was, he consumed them. Paul said, the love of God constraineth me. How could someone keep doing what they're doing, being beaten, being rejected, being shipwrecked, fighting devils, fighting the Sanhedrin? How could you continue? And he didn't take that many offerings. And he probably didn't drive a nice car. And he, and he had some conditions with his eyes, but he just kept going. How did you do that and not complain? Look at your neighbor and say, don't ever be a whiner. Come on, tell them right now, don't <laughs> Come on, say, you'll never make it whining all the time. But hey, how, how, listen to me. Hey, 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 you whiners, listen to me. How, how did he continue the course? I fought a good fight. I've continued, I've finished. How, how did he do that? He, he lived it. It sustained him. This isn't just to get you and me to, and then the miracle for the moment. It's to sustain you for what we don't know lies ahead. But we don't know. Come on, say we don't know. We don't know. But we walk by faith. We walk by faith. Not, by Not by sight. Not by the news channels. Not by, news. Not by yesterday's news channels. Yesterday. I need fresh fire need fresh and fresh oil. fresh oil. I'm here to get some fresh today. Come on, give God a big, big shout all over the place. Come on. Come on. Come on, put your hands up. Say, Holy Spirit, I yield to you this morning to see something, hear something, to feel something. Oh, touch me with the glory. Oh, just your presence that I can go throughout this day breaking curses, breaking patterns of the past. Living in a new now moment. That's what I long for. A new now moment in Jesus' name. Come on, give him a mighty praise. You may be seated. Did you know that we really, if, if we thought about this, because I have thought about this, did you ever wonder why that whenever you reminisce or you think about your life, especially when you go backwards. You can't remember everything. You can't. Most of us can't remember, you know, a lot of stuff. I don't mean that in a bad way. But you, you do remember moments. And that's what our life really is. It's about moments. You know, it's whenever that really, really great thing happened or that really, really special thing happened or that really, really bad thing happened or that operation that accident. Our life is made up in moments. And that's why you need to capture your now moment. There's a verse in Proverbs 30, verse 5. Don't turn there yet because we're going to go somewhere else. But Proverbs 30, verse 5, I love this verse. It's become so special to me. It says of God himself, he captures the wind with his fist. Come on, hold your hand up. He captures the wind with his fist. He grabs the moment. He seizes the moment. Too many people are in meetings like this thinking about tonight, about tomorrow, about next week, and they miss their moment. You know, you, do, you don't want to do that. You want to begin to what? Be attentive and live in your now moment. Don't be controlled by your past because you don't want to be defined by your past. You don't want to be defined by your challenges or your failures. You want to be defined by who you are today. If you show me your high school picture, I won't know you. Come on, say amen. <laughs> I'll say, who's that? And you'll say me. I'll say, there's no way that's you. Because we're not defined back there. 
that's a part of your life. It, it helped get you here, good, bad, or ugly. It helped get you here. But it's not who you are today. Hopefully, it's not who you are today. Amen. Hopefully, all of the church services and all of the singing you've done, hopefully, any Bible reading you've done at all has helped begin the process of that transformation. That's what the Holy Spirit's all about. That's why he heals you. He don't heal you because he's bound to his word. I hate when people say he's bound to his word. It makes him sound like the Holy Spirit's handcuffed and he has to heal me tonight. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, he, he's been assigned to you with a master plan yes. to bring about a change in you that everybody will see without you opening up your mouth. People feel something around you. They leave your presence and they comment on what? Boy, did she have nice teeth. <laughs> you don't want that, even though you do have nice teeth. That's not what you want. I'm going to find out where she got that lipstick. I mean, that looked like... I hear there's a lipstick with no lead in it. I think that's what she's wearing, no lead lipstick. You don't want people to know you for that. You want people to know you for what that I feel around her. I, I would tell my grandmother when I would leave spending some time with Catherine Coleman, I would say, what, man, what kind of perfume does she wear? I mean, there, I just smelled this, this, oh, this perfume around. She said, Billy, she doesn't wear perfume. I said, well, then you ought to go sit there and talk to her because it's just very much powerful. She said, no, no, she doesn't wear perfume. I said, well, then what was I smelling? She said, Billy, surely you know. Sometimes grandmothers are grand. Come on, somebody, they're just grand. <laughs> they're more grand than they are the mother. Come on, can you say amen? <laughs> and and I, I, those were little, little pieces of information that you learn, but you don't understand. Understanding is the last thing you get out of the trifecta. Get knowledge, get wisdom, get understanding. Know, know why, and know, and know, know how and know why. To know is, that's knowledge. To know how is wisdom, and to know why. Come on, say the why of life. The why of life, the why of life is, is knowing that understanding. That's why you can look back right now and say, I understand why they divorced. I, I understand why, you know, he did what he did. It might not have been right, but I understand it. There's a lot of things people do, and I know about it, and they're here, here trying to get a miracle, and I, I, I don't agree with what they're doing, but I understand it. That keeps me in grace. Understanding will keep you out of judgment. Oh, that's so good. None of you are writing it down. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> Come on, see, understanding will keep me in grace. It will keep me out of judgment. And the reason we don't have a lot of grace with people is because we just don't know what all they've been through. If you knew what, mo if you knew what some of these people sitting here today have had to do just to live life and get here today, oh, my. Oh, my. I don't know how many years ago, 10, 15 years ago, I was preaching in the Cree Indian Reservation, and in oh, my, it was so far up there, I ran into Santa Claus on my way up, you know. <laughs> and... And it was 60 below zero. We had over 1,000 Cree Indians every night for three nights. And, and I, I was talking to the, he was Chief Billy Diamond. He's gone on to be with the Lord now, but he's well, well known. You can Google him, Chief Billy Diamond. He was the leader of the Cree Nation, the most prosperous group of Indians, you know, in the Western Hemisphere. They own their own airlines. It's just incredible. But... Um, I said to him, I said, you know, th these people, because when they would come in the back door, I was on the stage, when they would come in the back door, you could see the steam that would open up when that door opened up. That's how cold it was outside. And the northern lights were hung over them services every night. We would go out and see the northern lights. And I said to Billy Diamond, I said, I'm amazed that you get all these people here. Uh, where do they come from? And he said, Billy, let me show you something. He took me outside as far as I could see were snowmobiles. And it hit me. I mean, this is just like riding camels. And I saw when I pulled in here this morning, I thought, these are just boring cars. <laughs> <laughs> and all you have to do is put gas in them and turn them on, and they get you here. Sometimes we forget what people of yesterday, even in some places of the world today, 
have to do to get to a service. It matters that you're here. And who knows what you had to fight to get here. Maybe you had to take a pain pill to get to a healing service. How about that? Maybe you had to have your wife rub your neck so you could turn it every which way to get here. You have to understand, God sees everything. And he sees every little bit of give that you give. Giving is money, yes. Giving is your praise, yes. But giving, giving is your effort. If there's one thing I could say to you this morning, I'd like you to remember, effort means everything to God. Because as you get older, it takes effort to do everything. Hey, what was easy, surfing when I was younger, now I've got to really think about it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I never thought about sharks. Today I do. Come on, say amen. Say amen. <laughs> and it's just crazy how that's, how did I ever surf all those years and never think about even seeing a dorsal fin? And I bet stuff bumped me, and I thought, there's somebody out here, but there's nobody there. Yeah, there was somebody there. <laughs> but what changes in us? We're, we change. We change. And it's so important that you grasp the understanding and have more mercy for people. We judge so quickly. They never should have divorced. He never should have had that surgery. He never should have been driving at that time of night. He never should have. I told him not to drink that alcohol. Well, do you know why he was drinking it? Does that matter to you? All these things, they fill a void. The problem is the void, not the drugs. Drugs is not our problem. It's the void that people have in their life to take those drugs. That's why they take the drugs. There's a void there. And they don't want to get involved personally with people. They just want to get involved with something that makes them feel and replaces what God would give or what their wife or husband would give. Or maybe they go to a loveless church. You know what a loveless church is, right? How many know what a loveless church is? That's too many. <laughs> That's too many. That's where you go in and you just shake hands and you get rigor mortis at the door. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and then you spend the rest of the day just, you know, getting rigor mortis. And, and you don't remember sermons and songs and people. And you leave there and you go, I went to church. We need all the help we can get in this hour. I said, in this hour, wickedness is expanding. And it says, it says in the book of Daniel chapter 12, what? That wickedness will get more wicked, but righteous will get... Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. Um, if you have your Bible, I just want to run a thought by you before we get into anything else here this morning. We have limited time today. And uh, we'll be here again tonight. Boy, last night, wasn't last night spe a special night? Wasn't it? <laughs> Acts chapter 3, did I say Acts chapter 3? Okay. Acts chapter 3, there we go. Yeah. Acts chapter 3, now Peter and John went up to the, together to the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb was, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. And seeing Peter and John uh, about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And he, Peter, listening to his eyes upon him with John, and he said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them. Now look at that word right there, expecting. Look at that word. He gave heed unto them what? Expecting. Come on, I want everybody. He gave heed unto them and what? Expecting. Expecting. Boy, I pray for so many people that don't expect much, more than the prayer. A lot of people, all they expect is your skin to touch their skin. And just go to the beach if you want that. <laughs> just go out there and get in the ocean. Or... But that's, that's sad that so many people are in church. They sing the same songs. Same people have an experience. Some people have nothing because they expect nothing or they expect so little. This here man is not even, not even a born-again man. He's a cripple from the mother's womb. But he got into a pattern whenever he would come into contact with people in his position, where his position was. He expected money to hit the cup. He, he allowed that to be formed in his thinking. Where he was, his thoughts, 
where he was laid. You know, that was his own personal culture. He wasn't sitting there with a group of people. So he learned to expect when people come close, because not everybody would even come close to a beggar. They didn't know if he had, they had a disease or he had a devil or what. So they would not even come close. But when they came close, boom, the bell would ring. I'm going to get me some money. I don't know how much, but that coin would hit the cup. And he would say, man, I got some money. And that was his life daily. What you do daily determines your destiny. Tell me what you want to do. Tell me what you want to do, who you want to be, what you want to conquer. And then tell me your daily habits, and I'll say you have a chance. People are going the opposite direction of where they really want to go. And until you change that, and we're going to talk about that, but until you change that, then you're going to have the same or close to the same outcome most of your life. You may change churches, same outcome. You may like this pastor a little better, but same outcome. And if it gets too far late into your life, you come into a conclusion, well, it's not about the church or the pastor, it's about me and how my wiring has never been changed. I can't even get healed of a sore throat. Boy, I hope I don't get dementia. I hope I don't get something more serious. I can't even get free from a sore ankle. And I'm called to a healing ministry. And I can't, and my knees hurt, my bones hurt. How, how's this work? Catherine Coleman used to tell me, she said, Billy, because I said to her, Miss Coleman, aren't you getting a little old for this? I told her that. <laughs> my grandmother said, she should have slapped you right there. She, <laughs> she said, don't you ever say that to me. I said, well, ma'am, but look what all she does, and she, she looks so frail. And I said, Miss Coleman, I said, don't, don't you ever think, you know, you might want to not do this much longer. And she said, young Billy, I don't believe you said that. And she said, please say that again. I thought, oh, boy. You know, and I said, you know, I told her, and she said, do you understand that spirit that moves through me to touch other people is moving through me, touching every organ, touching every bone, touching every piece of my blood pressure. It comes through me and out to them. And that was what she learned to cultivate. You form your own either good habits or godly habits. A lot of them are good, but they're not godly. Paul told Timothy, bodily exercise profiteth little, but godly exercise profiteth all. First Timothy chapter 4. Come on, say bodily. bodily. Come on, say the craze of the moment, the of the moment. In, America. in America. Bodily exercise. Bodily exercise. Looking, good. Looking good. Trim. Trim. Tone. Tone. Young. So there's three of us here that have that. Come on, say amen. amen. What's the rest of us do? That's what I want to know. Wait for the rapture. Got to get her and get out of here before I get worse. It, it's really, really important that you understand that, that God has a plan that if you go his way, things change. This man here, completely helpless, couldn't even get to the gate himself. So his, his expectations were, they're going to carry me. I'm expecting to be carried. It didn't start out like that. It started out just an act of benevolence. Hey, thanks for bringing me. Hey, how about tomorrow? And it, be, it built over time. Expectancy comes over time. You choose to build that culture. And then over time, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, his expectancy, his condition, put him in the right place at the right time to get the right thing. The trouble with a lot of us is we can't build that, that case of expectancy. Our life is so, you know, um, hit and miss, up and down, in and out. And there's nothing real, real consistent except we worry, we're afraid, we don't have enough money, and we have to lose three pounds. Come on, can you say amen? <laughs> and how am I going to pay for this car payment? And what's my kids going to do when they get older? Do I have enough money to live with when I retire? What am I going to do? You know, and how can I get a job? I mean, the job market, I'm not that fast. I'm not computer literate. What am I going to do? And your thoughts are all going down, you know, they're, they're circling the drain. So you come into a meeting and you think, man, I got to get some encouragement. No, you have to get saved or delivered or something. You got to get a new way of thinking. Unless your goal is just to get to heaven. 
See, if you don't care how your life is here, I mean, hey, I don't look, it doesn't matter what this body, don't matter how I feel, don't matter what's going on, just so I get there, I got a lot of friends there. And that's a lot of people's goal, and they, they, they throw to waste the years that they're here. He came to give you life and life more abundantly when you get to heaven. No. Life more abundantly here. But that's not automatic. The day the Garden of Eden closed, automatic stopped. There was no automatic presence anymore. It's just something that has to be cultivated. We're living in a very sick, sin-ridden world, getting worse by the day. There's more diseases now than ever before. Half the people that I pray for have never heard of what they have. I'm going to have to hire somebody just with a medical dictionary. Did you hear what that is there? What is that? Is that really a disease? The names they come up with. And people get stage one mixed up with stage three, and stage three mixed up with stage four. It's so convoluted. And so it's very difficult with what's going on in the news and the weather and, it's, you know, with politicians. I mean, it it's, has divided our country right down the middle, you know, and you're either red or blue. And if you're, if you're blue, dear God, you better hurry and get saved or you're not going to heaven. And if you're red, you're guaranteed to be there. Come on. <laughs> it, nothing could be more crazier in our whole life. What happened to you must be born again, red or blue? What happened to that? Culture's replacing what's in this book. So here's a guy here that really, he wasn't even born again, didn't have the spirit inside of him, yet because of a need that he had and the pattern that was formed, he expected, every time that he got to that gate, he expected money. He's living a more expecting life than half the spirit-filled people we know. <laughs> So what is the secret here? Is there a principle here that we can talk about real quick here? Because I don't want to be long on this, but I, 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 I'm just so tired of praying for people that all they're expecting is a prayer. I actually pray for a guy. I tell this story a lot because it's so, some of these stories will stick with me until I meet Jesus because they're just so profound in teaching. And this man in the wheelchair for 20 years, I, I, I went to pray because I, I, I knew he was going to get out. I just, one of those, this guy's getting out of the chair. I didn't know he was there 20 years. I didn't know that he had no feeling, couldn't walk, couldn't stand. I don't get readouts on everybody that's in a meeting. And if I did, I'd rip them up and throw them away. I don't want to get a readout. I want to get a downline. Come on, a download. Yeah. So this guy, I went over and I said, sir, tonight, tonight, tonight's your night. And he said, oh, Billy, I'm glad I'm here. Just put that prayer on me. Put that prayer on me. I said, okay, I'm going to pray, then you're going to walk. And there's, I don't know, we were, well, we were at the Presbyterian Church in downtown Pittsburgh, where I was healed, where Catherine held meetings. And so we were in the alleyway and knew right where we were. And I said, I'm going to pray for you, and then tonight we walk. And he said, don't embarrass me. That's what he said. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, I do a lot of preparation to get to this point. I don't walk out here just after I've had, you know, you know, two fried eggs and a piece of toast and, and said, called a bunch of people on the phone. I, I spent late last night getting ready for this morning. And I'll spend most of today getting ready for tonight. Because if you don't prepare, if you don't prepare, then you give the devil so much room to just put all kind of stuff up in your head. The talking snake is always talking. And so is the Holy Ghost. But which one do we listen to? I said, come on. I said, let's go. And he said, Billy, you're embarrassing me. He said it. It came out over the microphone. So people in the balcony and people downstairs, they heard this. I didn't know quite how to answer that. And I said, no, what do you mean? He's your, I, didn't come, I didn't come to walk. I came for prayer. <laughs> That's like going in a restaurant and sitting down. Can I help you? I didn't come to eat. I didn't come to eat. <laughs> I just came here to sit and listen to the music that's in the restaurant. I came, for, I came for the music. Well, that's okay on a regular basis, but there's a sign out front of this church tonight, Miracle Service. 
healing. I mean, I would think you'd want to be not here. He said, I just want prayer. Just love, I, want, I love to hear you pray, and I want to pr- I just put a prayer on me. <laughs> and I know, I'm, I'm pretty sensitive. I don't want to make anybody feel bad, but sometimes, you know, you've got to say, hey, are you awake? <laughs> are you, do, do you understand what's happening here? The devil is stealing your years. From your grandchildren, from your wife, from your what you want to do for God. Not that you can't be used in a wheelchair. We know that's not true. But we're always reaching for more. Glory to glory. Say glory to glory. glory to oh, you don't even believe it. Say glory to glory. glory, to glory. And, and I said, okay. And he said, uh, I said, come on. I said, let, let's do this. He said, you keep embarrassing me. I'm, I'm going to go back to where I was. I couldn't believe it. So I was stuck there in front of everybody hearing those words. And I thought, what can I do here? So I said, you know what? I got a deal for you. I got a deal. He said, what's the deal? I said, I pray, you stand. Forget walking, you stand. He thought a minute. I, 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 I tricked him. I stumped him. Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm just using words I probably shouldn't use, but I mean, it caused him to pause because it was something out of, out of the ordinary. And he said to me, well, what do you mean? I said, I'm going to pray you stand. He said, but I can't stand. I said, well, that was before you came here. <laughs> but see, when you come here not expecting anything, then you don't think anything's going to change. When you go just to do the worship and when you go just to hear the sermon, when you go, the reason there's a reason for the worship is to take you somewhere where you can't take yourself. That's why people do Uber. You can't get there without help, so you call Uber. And you get in somebody's car that could be a criminal. Come on, somebody say amen here. It could be a serial killer in that Uber car. But you don't care because why? You want to get somewhere. God, we need that attitude today. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, give him a shout. And, and, I, and time was running out because you don't want to force somebody. You don't want to kind of make somebody embarrassed. You don't want to make a spectacle. But I knew what I heard. When I hear something, I'm going for it. If, 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 if I hear something that could be, well, maybe that was not for now, I'll back off. I'll get graceful and give space. It's something you learn over time. This one, I heard God say, go get him. Go get him. Pull, you get him out of that chair. I don't know why that always means. You just have your mouth, your hands. I said, okay, so here we go. I said, so listen, I, don't, I got people to pray for here, a lot of people. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to touch you. You stand. And he just said, oh. He was groaning, groaning, <laughs> groaning. If he could talk, he was, I'm calling my mother right now. I'm calling my mother. <laughs> Where's my lawyer? Can I call a lawyer? <laughs> and I hurried and touched him. Well, then before I touched him, I looked up at his caregiver. His caregiver was holding onto the handles of the wheelchair. I looked up at him with his eyes. Eyes talk. Oh, do eyes talk. He he was saying with his eyes, don't look at me. (laughs) So you're helpless here with this guy that's in a meeting, in a wheelchair, about to get healed, not knowing it. But he needed some work. Everybody you meet that you want to see a miracle, they, a lot of them need work because they, something has killed their faith for where they are. We all have faith for where we came from, but we have trouble conquering the new faith because we're running into something that we have to grow it. Everything you've beat so far in your life to get here, you've overcome, but there's things that you could face in the future that you're going to need more faith. Let me say it like this. There's things you want to buy that you're going to need more money. You know, and it's just important that you got to prepare for what you might need in the future instead of living on yesterday's stuff. And I said, okay. I said, here we go. Name it. I've touched him. Boom, boom, boom. He stood right up. He stood right up. I thought he was going to get, he was going to die right there with shock. He just stood up. (laughs) And his legs were quivering because he hadn't used those muscles in 20 years just quivering like this. And I said, look at you, look at you. And he said, I don't believe this. I said, I pr- you probably don't, but look. <laughs> you know? And he, I said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to walk. I said, well, there you go. I get and walk. He walked across the front of that Presbyterian church. And watch this. The place was absolutely going ballistic. They were just like, they were more happy for him than he was happy for him. 
They knew what happened more than he did. They were expecting more than he was. And he looked out at the crowd as he's walking. He said, I don't believe any of this. <laughs> well, the truth is he didn't. He was running on borrowed faith. Wow. See, that's the power of you knowing you have faith before you pray for somebody, before you minister to people, and you're putting the burden on them to believe. They may not have the ability to. But if you're real and you have what you say and it's more than emotion, it's more than just you reading a faith book and saying, I can do this. But it's, if, if, if it's working out in your own life, that's where it starts. If, if they see that in you, then they jump on your faith wagon. And then they get a, once they get healed, now, now, you, now they want another one. Now they want another scoop. Come on. Then they want two scoops. Then they want a bigger cone. Come on. Can you say amen? And... So expectation, let's just talk about that for a moment. Like you came here this morning, I'm so glad you're here. I thought after last night, gosh, we don't know if anybody's going to come this early. How many drove in from somewhere? You don't, you're not on the property, but you drove in this morning. Anybody? Where'd you drive in from? Give me, where'd you drive in from? Pioneer Park. Pioneer Park? Yeah, Zolfo Springs. Oh, okay, Zolfo Springs. Okay, over here? Where? I'm not sure I understood that. West oh, West Bradenton. Okay. Uh huh. Yes, ma'am. Fort Myers. Fort Myers. Okay. Anybody else over here? Uh huh. Where I can't see the light is in my eyes. Yes, sir. <coughs> Where? West Bradenton, San Remo. Dan. San Remo. San Remo. Okay, sir. Don't get an attitude. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are going to need deliverance before it's all over, right over here. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm so glad you made it here. I'm so glad you made it here. Expectations. What is it that's going on in our lives that we expect more bad than good? Even though we go to church, we love God with all of our heart, yet more negative things seem to take place in moments at times. Because cultivation, or is the same word for cultivation, is preparation. And one of the greatest things you can cultivate with or prepare with is what you're thinking. And a lot of people think a lot about their death, especially as you get older. Think about being a, a burden to your family. You go to church, you go get prayer, but you're thinking about death. You even just bought burial insurance last week. Now listen to me. In subtle ways, you're preparing your children more about death than about you. Hey, watch what God's about to do. So you're not laying anything on the line that causes God to say, I'm attracted to that. The anointing is attracted to things. The anointing is attracted to what God's promised you. The anointing's job is to make true what God has already said. But you can't help who you are. Well, that's what you say. But then you, you spend a lot of time preparing yourself for other things that come to pass. So you can prepare yourself to not have enough money. You can prepare yourself. You can prepare your wife. We're not going to have enough. So, you know, we're going to have to come up with something and and. That whenever you begin to prepare, the money is not, you don't have enough, and, and you begin to think that tithing is not enough. It's like saying, I need Jesus plus all this other stuff. He said, if you tithe, come on, he said, if you tithe, there'll be no, there'll be no room to put it. You can't go get enough buildings here in Bradenton to put the harvest. But see, you haven't grasped a hold of that, so you, you have to think, I need this plus this plus this. We have people working so much, they don't see their kids. They, don't, they leave when it's dark and come home when it's dark. And they're too tired to go to church or work at the church. And now we say we understand that. I do and you do. But somewhere in that chemistry, there's something not right. We're, we're entertaining more thoughts that's being put into us by the movies, by the media, by who people around you, by people that have never seen increase in their money, 
or never seen healing. People themselves that are medicated beyond, beyond whatever. People we live in a medicated America. My God, that's the number one thing in most people's minds. A pill to get up and a pill to get through the day and three pills at nighttime. And then I love Jesus in the morning. <laughs> Are you on drugs when you say that or do you really mean it? Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> See, you, you, will, you, will <clears throat> you will receive what you expect, but you'll expect what you prepare for. If you never sow a seed, you won't be expecting a harvest. If you never give your life to praise, how can you expect the power from it? If you never forgive like we should, how can you expect people to forgive you? You know, I mean, if you never lift weights or, or how do you expect to get muscles or trim or whatever? You know, if you never fully accept yourself, how do you not, how do you, how do you not keep continually compare yourself? If you don't begin to affirm who you are, if you don't begin to accept what God's given you now, if you don't celebrate that, it's so important that you, you just, you know, you, and pretty soon if you expect pr properly, you'll begin to expect things that are way outside of your range. You know, you'll just, it, it'll blow your mind what can happen to you if you just begin to change what you're preparing for. And it's never too late. I mean, that guy walked. That guy walked. I don't know what happened to him. I mean, we, we may have a record on him somewhere. That's been a couple years ago. But the point of that is that guy was, he was like a frozen piece of chicken coming out of the freezer. Come on. <laughs> And he got skinned, defeathered, broiled, and served right there in that meeting. Come on, somebody give God a shout here. Now, that does not always happen. It's because a lot of people get offended so easily. It's amazing. It's just so amazing to me what offends people in a healing service. It's like they want help, but don't challenge me. They want help, but don't push me. One guy came to my meeting. He said, I don't fall for anybody. <laughs> I said, I'm going to pray for you back here. I'll stand back here. My God, I don't want to touch. I don't want to get cooties myself. Come on, can you say amen? <laughs> but what an attitude. Where would that come from? How did you even get into the parking lot, let alone the church service? Those thoughts, what you meditate on. Those movies you play. The Bible says don't regard iniquity. Do not regard iniquity in your heart. One of the hardest things you'll ever do is getting that, that thought life under the full submission of the Holy Spirit. I don't know any other program you can watch or any other book you can read. I don't know anything else you can do that can confront the evil that's in our head. The everyday stuff that we hear or see, the lusts of the flesh and lusts of the eye and, and some of the things that have been said to you that you can't get out of your, it's, it's, it's in your wheelhouse. You can't get that thought out of what your dad said to you. You know, we was in a meeting out at Brother Copeland's. There was like 2,000 people there. And, and I said, you know, there's a lady here. You were so abused as a child and they kept you under the staircase. That's where your parents kept you. They would feed you underneath the... I never heard of anything in my life. I never read that or saw a movie. But I heard him. So if I don't do what he says, then, then he stunts what I want to do. And I mean, the whole place just went <laughs> quiet. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I need you right now. I need you, Lord. <laughs> anytime now, Lord, anytime. And there wasn't a ripple. So I moved on. I'm thinking, okay, I, I know I heard that, but I wasn't going to make a big deal about it. Maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes later, I'm doing something else, and this lady's coming up along the side, and the usher stopped her, because they should. You should, show, you should never just approach the front with anybody in today's world, in today's world. And, and I said, bring her over. And she just said in front of all these people, I'm with a lady under the staircase. <laughs> You could have heard a pin drop. 
and she began to tell her story. You know, it, it, there's something about reality that we all stay away from. There's something about our own reality that either we're ashamed of it, afraid of it, so God can never touch it. So rather than prepare for an invasion of righteousness, an invasion for someone to say to you, no, you don't have a wife, you've had five, and the one you're with isn't your wife. People would quit church. But the lady at the well didn't have another well to go to. Come on, say amen. <laughs> so she allowed herself to get invaded. She allowed that. People don't come to meetings to, to be allowed for an invasion. They come for help. But they don't compute that help comes through purging. That help comes through confession. Help comes through admitting that something's going on in your life that you can't control, that you're afraid. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. There's something wrong with staying in fear. There's nothing there's wrong with where you are, but it's wrong to stay there. You don't want to camp at the wrong fireplace Amen. and just say, well, we went camping. You know, you've got to believe that what you heard is going to happen. Every year we make a trip to Carmel in California, my family, my wife, two kids, Billy and Bokeh, when they were little, and we did this vacation out there. And it's where Clint Eastwood was the mayor of, California, of Carmel at that time. And, and so I was saying to my kids, because I, I watched his westerns and grew up watching those spaghetti westerns, and they were relatively clean, right? And uh, I mean, he, he kissed a girl at the end, but I never saw anything bad in, the, in those movies. And the bad guy's always got shot, and he won. I like that. Come on, I like the winner. <laughs> so we were, we were there, and when I said, you know, I'm, I'm a, this Clint Eastwood, I'm going to meet him out here, and he's going to walk in and uh, right in here to our table. Well, my kids looked at me and said, Dad, Dad, stay with the church. Stay with the church. <laughs> it's amazing that people think that something it only works here. <laughs> Praise only works here. Prayer only works here. We can't take prayer out there. Oh, my God, all this stuff, we come here to do all this stuff, but nothing works out there. That's our problem. And so I, I said to both of them, I said, you watch, there's one of these. We only go once a year, and sometimes we miss a year. I said, I don't know where it's going to be, but he's going to walk right through those doors and come right over to our table, and, and, and they just laughed at me. So that did it. You laugh at me. I, I'm going to God on you. I'm going to God on you. And, and I don't know how many years after that, Maybe five, but just we'd go and we'd, sit, we'd go to the restaurant there. And he owns a whole big place there and he has his own restaurant. And so there's a chance that he would walk in there. And I've asked people, does he ever come in here? Rarely, rarely. He comes, sneaks in at night, goes over to the bar, you know, but he just don't like to be around people. And I'm thinking, well, that's about to change. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not just because I had a desire. I heard Holy Spirit say, I'm going to use this to prove something. So God wants to prove things through you. Amen. Some things people don't believe because you just because you go to church. They don't believe just because you say, oh, Jesus is Lord. They don't. There's something about you that becomes common with everybody else except your faith. Lord. There's something that God wants to do through you that's going to open the eyes to your rest of your family. Yeah. There's something that's going to happen. I believe coming out of this meeting today, your healing, an increase in finances, a divine appointment. There's something going to happen out of this meeting here today. So I don't know, a few years ago, we were there at the restaurant, and we were sitting around the table, and the waitress comes, and she waited on us, and I said, I'll just take a bowl of chili. And I'm, I'm whispering underneath my breath, oh, God, let it be today. Let it be today. It was just one of those days I needed some living proof, you know, just. And, uh, and so I think it was my daughter, Bokeh, she said, well, Dad, is it today? Is he coming in today? <laughs> well, let me slap you and then say, yes, he is coming in today. <laughs> See, because faith can make you seem weird. <laughs> Saying, I'm going to walk, I'm going to see. You watch, I'm going to see. You know, this growth on the side of my face is going to disappear. I'm going to own the place that I'm working in. I'm a waitress today, but I'll own this place someday. 
Those are decrees, and sometimes you're, you, it seems reckless, but you're saying more faith than you even realize. You know, there's a thing called so positive. Kill me, Jesus said, and I will rise again the third day. Oh. Mm. We don't know how radical that must have been to the people that were looking at skin and bone and flesh just like us. Go ahead and kill me, but I'll rise again the third day. So I'm sitting there eating my chili. It was so hot I had to sip it. So I was down on this sipping my chili. And here comes this big sh shadow. <laughs> in, in. <laughs> Just come walking in the door. There he was. And I went, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, they didn't see it. <laughs> and I was so excited more for them than me. And I went, Clint! Clint! He looked over and he, how could he, how could he not come over and say hi? You know, <laughs> she starts walking over and here's my daughter, and my son, and my wife. Like, <laughs> don't you ever mess with me? Don't ever mess with me. <laughs> See, this stuff we believe here is more than just for the altar. Yeah. This works, but you got to work it. You say, but that's so shallow. Maybe. Maybe, maybe to you. I like confirmation. I don't want to live without confirmation. I'm not God. I have a, no, listen to me. I, have always have a, I always have the opportunity of being wrong, of missing something. I want to know what I'm hearing. I don't want to get so you know, big in my genes that I can't miss it. I like knowing that I'm on target when I walk into a meeting, like I'm hearing I'm hearing at a high level. And that don't mean that everybody always cooperates. Doesn't mean everybody's going to listen to you. But God will give you confirmation that what you're hearing is correct. So I walked out of that. I walked out of that restaurant. I was feeling. Per I was floating out of that restaurant. <laughs> so then my family said, well, "What's God saying to you today? What are we going <laughs> to?" I came in at dad and left the prophet. Come on, can you say amen? It's important. It's important. No, it's important at your stage right now where you are that you begin to think the kind of thoughts you're supposed to be thinking and quit letting people plant all the wrong seeds in you. I don't care if it's Sean Hannity or Tucker Carlson or I don't care if it's liberal news. I don't care if it's a, a, a feed off of social media. What are you feeding on? What are you feeding on that causes you to be in Holy Ghost meetings where miracles happen and you can't get the, the expectation for you? It's because you've prepared wrong. Come on, you've got your holidays, right? You know that Christmas means tree and Thanksgiving means turkey. Come on. Come on. You got it right. You got the weather and the seasons right. You know when to come to the Florida and when not to. You get all that right. But the part the devil has a lock hold on, a stronghold on, is keeping you from expecting that you're going to see better at your age. You know, that you're going to get rid of that tumor. That by the time you get your next x-ray, they'll find nothing. That you've had your last chemotherapy treatment. We serve a God of intervention. Yes. Anywhere, anywhere along the way. I love what Dodie Osteen says in her, you know, in her story of her journey of healing. It's just she went through some treatment. But she said in, she was expecting somewhere along the way. It's gone. Maybe out of 18 treatments, you had to take 12. Quit crying about it. Say, I don't know. God's going to show up. He showed up in the storm in what? The fourth watch. What's that mean? He left them in the storm till four in the morning. He could have delivered them at 12 at night and gotten, kept all of that other fear and stuff going on. He left them there till it's darkest before dawn. He left them there in the darkest hour of the night. And they weren't too happy. And they weren't full of faith. I mean, you know, he, you know the story, right? How many know the story? How many know that story? Let me see. All right. Don't groan about it. 
But the Bible says the fourth watch for a reason. It means it's always coming before time. He didn't keep them from being thrown into the furnace. He thought, ah, oh, let him get in there a little bit. Let him get some. Get in there. I'll show up in the middle of it. And he did. He didn't keep Daniel from the den, but he said, I'll keep him in it. Your faith is on trial all the time. Whether God heals you immediately or whether he brings you through something, it's that sound around you. It's that way that you're, that, and sometimes it don't turn out the way we think. Heaven's forever. Eternity's forever. God, God sometimes interprets our lives in, in light of eternity, not in light of right now. We all lose people we love. I said we all lose people that we love. And I believe, my humble belief is that when you have people that you adore, you love so much, they're on the other side, it's part of your motivation to not want to stay here. Sometimes I said, Lord, I think I want to see my mother more than I want to see you, and I hate that. And sometimes I feel like I want to see my grandmother more than I want to see you. Oh, my brother that, that got me into all this. I, sometimes I'm so sorry. You know what he says to me? I understand. Where do you see me? You'll forget about everybody. Come on, somebody. Come on, give him praise. Come on. All we know is what we know. But that don't mean we can't change and develop new habits that really attract the anointing. And sometimes we have to jump on other people's faith and borrow some stuff to get there. Don't be too big for that. Humble yourself a little bit. He helps humble people. You know, if you're always thinking, I have enough, and I've seen this, and you know, one guy came up, he said, you know, I, I was around in Oral Roberts days, and I knew Oral pers or personally, I knew Marcella personally, he started naming all these, you know, super people. And I said, those are amazing people. I said, I just love all those people. He said, yeah, 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 he said, but I heard you were here, and I think, he was treating me like I was roadkill. Come on, somebody. <laughs> And I thought, hey, buddy, hey, I'm part-time ventriloquist. I talk without you knowing. So I was saying, God, knock you into yesterday. Knock this guy. Because people sometimes just don't know how to respect you, what to say. They're awkward with their words. And you can get offended very, very easily. And I said, well, sir, I'm glad you met all those people. But let's, let's get to the point. What's going on here? Well, I don't know. I just thought I'd let you know. I just want to let you know that he has a pedigree. I've been around all the superstars. Who are you, you know? And I said, I, I, I just don't want to get in. I'm not on Mount Rushmore. Don't intend to be. Don't want to be. I don't want to be. I'm flesh and blood, not rock. Come on. Can you say amen? And so I touched him. He got healed. He got wonderfully healed. At least at that moment, he manifested healing. And he, I mean, he said, man, that's amazing. And he said, wow. I could see what he was saying is, how'd you do this? Here's what I said. Well, they softened the ground before you got here. One guy said, I was at Benny Hinn's, and this didn't happen. I said, but Benny helped this. Don't you get it? We're working together. He helped this. His prayers, his anointing softened the ground that you could get healed here tonight. And he was just stunned by that. People are stunned that we're working together. That you go, when you go to heaven, you're going to bump into your favorite enemy. Come on, say amen. <laughs> and you're going you're to gag it. You're going to, oh, how'd, how'd you get here? <laughs> He's going to say, the same way you did. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, say, saved by grace. Saved by grace. Not by works. Not by works. <laughs> you, you can change what you're expecting. You can change. Because if you don't, then you're going to get just more of the same as you get older. You know? One girl asked me, she's a, you see her on television today. She's still on television today. But she came to a meeting. She said, am I ugly? I said, you're far from ugly. And uh, I said, I hate to measure people like that. I said, but you asked me the question. You're not ugly. She said, why do I attract all the losers? <laughs> I'm thinking, dear Lord, I don't know if I want to pray for this lady. I didn't, have, I didn't have an answer in myself. I didn't, have, I didn't read a book, so I have to hear. So I took a step back. I said, so say that again. She said, I attract just losers. They don't have a job. You know, they're, they're after one thing. You know, they just want me for this. And uh, I said, well, you are a celebrity. 
And I, she said, yeah, but she said, I, don't you understand? I want somebody that really, really loves me. You know, and, I, and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. And here's what the Holy Ghost said. He said, tell her that what's inside of her is attracting losers. It's what's inside of you. It's a signal you send on the inside. You'll attract depressed people. You'll attract people that, are, that don't really care about you, that will continue to use you and abuse you. So I said to her, I said, you need to really change your inside. It's a magnet that will draw people or it will repulse people. And you can't hide your inner man. You can hide your words. You can hide your actions. But you can't hide what's in here. People, people that are around you long enough will, will pick up that you're, you're a user. You're a taker. You don't give much. Or they'll, they'll discover that all you do is talk about yourself. I, got to, I was going to lunch with a, with a guy. I get so tired of having lunch with him because all he talked about was him. Never once asked me how I was doing. <laughs> we'd get out the thing. Maybe we'd change restaurants. Maybe if we change this. And it, always, it was always about him, him, and more of him. And I got tired of him. I got tired of him. And he didn't even know it. No one's ever corrected him. Boy, I'm going to tell you what's going on with the wife. You know? He'd never say, what's going on with your wife? Let me tell you about my kids. Never ask about my kids. He would always say about what God's called him to do. Never ask me about my last crusade. I'm done with this. I am just done with the, I'm out of grace. Come on, say, when you're out of grace, when you're out of gas. You're out of gas. <laughs> you just, I'm done. Because I began to expect more, and that's what it was. More of the same. You can change yourself today by beginning. You've got to fight through it. You've got you to say, no, that's just going to keep me where I am. I'm going to begin to expect what I'm reading in these scriptures. If you hear a great testimony, somebody shares a testimony, I'm going to take that and add that to what I'm going to begin to expect. We've had people lose weight in our meetings. If I told you how many people lost immediate weight, you'd, you'd all be running down here saying, help me. <laughs> no, I mean it. It's a scary thing when people come back holding their pants so they don't fall down. <laughs> ladies, ladies. One lady in Toronto, her pants fell down to her ankles. Wow. I had to come off the stage to tell her husband, look, get your wife. So I told her, keep your eyes on the Lord. Lay, raise your hands. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And, <laughs> So they had their hands all up, and they were looking up there. And I said, look, look, look. And he said, oh, my God. And they ran out of the meeting. They came running back in, waving a tape measure and said, she just lost four inches around her waist. No prayer. I don't know if that will happen today or not. But <laughs> if you feel your pants sliding a little bit, then and just duck out quickly to one of the restrooms. <laughs> but she had been praying. She had been praying. She had been asking God. She couldn't, she couldn't beat the weight thing. She had been fighting the weight demon. And, and, uh, and she came into a meeting. And God finally said, you know, you're expecting it. You got it. You're expecting it. You got it. You're going to get what you expect. And that's why you've got to watch those words. You've got to correct yourself. Most people aren't going to correct you. They, 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 they respect you too much. I'll probably be just like my mother, and my mother's, you know, she's a little hunched over, and when you get old, you get hunched over, and I don't know why you get hunched over, but I'm just hunched over, and <laughs> I'm just going to be like my mother. I'm not going to say, hey, now quit talking like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Some of you may want to do that. We may need a few people to talk like that. But I'm thinking, how do, how do I correct that? And then, then I, so I'll slide something, and like, hey, come on, all things are possible. That's what my Bible says. That means it's never too late. It means you're never too bad, never too wicked. You know, right down here in Sarasota, we had Charles Manson's grandson come to the meeting. Got delivered. And he came up. He had those same thoughts that was coming from the grandfather to the dad. And, you know, I didn't know that at the time. He had thoughts about doing crazy stuff. And, he got wonderfully set free. Him and his wife now have an amazing ministry. Oh, amazing, amazing ministry. But I'm thinking, so here's a guy, here's a guy that we could really say, wow, he was going to follow in line with the curse. 
but he decided to jump off the merry-go-round. Yes. How do you get off the merry-go-round safe? See, it's easier to stay on the merry-go-round than just change horses and think that you're in a big change. No, you just change horses on the same merry-go-round. How do you get off a merry-go-round? How many have been on a merry-go-round? Maybe I'm talking to the wrong crowd here. How many have been on a merry-go-round? How many ever thought about jumping off the merry-go-round? How about jumping off a roller coaster? No. No. Some places you're stuck till the ride's over. But when you can jump, you need to jump. I can't keep thinking like this. It's wrong. It's anti-scripture. It's not what God suffered for. If nothing else, I have to go after what he suffered for. When you get on that page, things happen. I don't want to forget, but I have to because look what he did. <sighs> I don't feel like giving money today, but I mean, look what he did. Lord. Look what he said. It's more blessed to give. Why do you say that? Because God don't multiply what you have. He multiplies what you give. Glory. Glory. You give, he multiplies. If you keep it, he doesn't multiply that. What you have, it sustains you, but that's all you have. If you could get into your head that you could give your way to be equal with anybody out there, there's no limits. He doesn't lie. 30, 60, 100 fold. 100 fold, 10,000 percent. You can't even go offshore and get that kind of money. Come on, say amen. amen. You can't even sell drugs and get that kind of money. But expecting is such a big part of our life. Like, who are you going to meet today that you think is going to change your life? Could you have a divine appointment today? Yeah. Yeah. Who? Who could you have a divine appointment with today that could really... I mean, besides obviously the Holy Ghost and Jesus, but who, who out here could really rock your world to say, wow, I, I didn't think that could ever happen possible. But you don't think that because you don't think that of yourself. You're going to begin to cultivate. You know, not that that means life or death. Not that that's everything. But what I find about, out about me, every little thing matters. Every little thing matters. And as you get older, every little thing matters more. You know, it really, really does. Last night on the stage, I mean, I was really, I didn't want to interrupt the flow, but I was really dry, and I wanted to say, get me some water. I just never got to it, and David came up and just said, hey, here's some water. I was just like, I said to him, thank you so much, and it meant more to me in that moment. Oh, my. You've you got to let little things begin to move you. Little pieces hold up big airplanes. Little hinges open up big doors. You know, and you've got to begin to really be grateful. You're sitting here today. I don't know how healthy you are. You look a little healthy. You look, there's a few of you look a little rough, but I'm going to move my head around here now. I'm going over in this side of the church over here. This side looks really healthy over here. But what is it you're expecting out of today? Instead of always saying, I need, I need, I need, keep me in prayer, I need, I need. What are you expecting? What are you preparing for? What are you preparing for? Oh, my. Are you preparing to live alone and be empty because you got hurt? Are you preparing to not see good the rest of your life? And you're researching eye plants, Im implants, and what are you preparing for? Or are you reading these verses that say, with God, all things are possible? Mm. Are you reading the right stories where Joseph was betrayed by family, sold to the merchants, put in prison for how many years? 13, 12, 13, 12 years? 12 years in prison. First 10, then two more. 12 years with a dream that he thought was probably. And it says the whole time he's in prison, the word of God was trying him. What was the word of God saying? Well, you were big about believing me when you first got it, but you still believe me. Do you still believe me? 
Come on, say, do you believe me now? Do you believe me now? It's easy to believe when you're healthy. Preachers preach healing real easy when they're healthy. And preachers preach prosperity real easy when they have money in the bank. But do you believe him today where you are right now? That your circumstances can change. Wow. I mean, you, you should walk around this campground thinking, hmm, you might buy me one of these someday. Yeah. I was sitting at lunch with Ralph Wilkerson a couple years ago before he passed. He's, he went to be home at about 93, something like that, even like your dad did. And he, so we're eating food at a restaurant. And he says, yeah, Billy, I'm going to get my results today from my blood test. I said, oh, way to go, Pastor. He said, they won't find nothing. Just, <laughs> just like just casual talking. He wasn't trying to prove anything. They won't find nothing. And it just struck me. I mean, I'm trying to eat. Now I don't even, can't even enjoy my food. Like, this guy knows his x-ray report before he gets it. I said, so you don't think they're going to find it? He said, I don't think. I know they won't find anything. I said, well, why'd you get the test then if you know what's going to happen? He said, well, they need to see it. <laughs> Billy, you've got to live like you can either own it or buy it or it's going to be given. Come on, that's how you've got to live. Come on, see, I'll own it. I'll buy it. I'll have favor for it. Somehow, some way, it's coming my way. Come on, give God a big, big shout here. Come on. But see, that was one of those thoughts just in fellowship, not in preaching, not reading a book, but just in fellowship. Carl Strader told me, the late great pastor up here in Lakeland, because you guys knew Carl well, he said, Billy, you'll get more prophetic words accidentally in fellowship than you will on purpose in a meeting. I never forgot that. Guess what I began to do? Pay attention to more what people were saying to me. Just casual people. I found out I was getting words of the Lord through people that weren't even walking with God. It's like a walkie-talkie being used. As, I'm thinking, thank you, sir, mister. You know, whoa, man, thank you. And I, I'd go home without even being in church, without opening up my Bible, because I began to listen to people more intently. Yeah. You're missing a lot. We're missing so much. Just by not being a good harvester, a good gleaner. Ruth was a gleaner. She was in the right field, gleaning behind the right wagon. How many is behind the wagon of Jesus? Let me see. How many feel you're in the right field at the right time? Then begin to glean everything everywhere you go. You can get a holy thing from an unholy person. I mean, good, tur good turns bad good. I can put my seed in bad ground and turn the ground good. We in, God invested in us. We weren't good. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to here. Come on. Come on, say, we were not good. We were not a good purchase. It looked pretty bad. No plumbing. No light. Odors everywhere. Come on. And Jesus said, I'm moving into you. Oh, somebody help me here today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So you, I'm going to watch the time here, 12, 10 after 12. You, you, you're an investment. And he expects the harvest from you. Quit being so hard on yourself. Quit judging yourself wrong. Start to believe in you. He believes in you. You may have to make some changes, better choices. How do I get back to these expectations? Change your relationships. The wrong people are feeding you the wrong stuff. Change them. Change the programs you're watching. Change your thoughts. If you don't change anything, then you really don't care about what, how to expect more. Change. Let me add a word to that. Radically change. When you move to California today, and back when I lived there, when you moved there then, or now, same thing. You don't find a church when you first move there. You find a spa <laughs> and a gym. That's, what you, that's number one out there. Look good. Got to look the part. 
Aren't you glad we don't have to look the part today here at the church? Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody give him a shot. Well, I'm tired of getting my hopes up. I get my hopes up all the time and get my faith sky high to get healed. And I just never, just never happened. I just thought, well, you know, I'm just going to trust the Lord. You know, I get the idea. I, I just don't think that's what the Bible teaches. I don't think that's what the Bible teaches. When I, I'd have you always pray and faint not. That's what Luke 18 says. Though I tarry long when I come, when I do come, I'll deliver you speedily. So somehow, you know, and somehow we think if you're in the hospital and you could cork board and put flowers up there in cards, that scares cancer away. So we go visit people and say, oh, you got beautiful cards. That doesn't scare anybody away. Oh, I love, your, I love this room. Don't even look like a hospital room. The devil's down there saying, yeah, just keep going down that road. Don't you dare say what Jesus said. Don't you dare pray a prayer of faith. Don't you go against the flow. You know, we're going to fight death until we realize, okay, then it, it is time. And people do pass. They get ultimately healed. They get the ultimate healing. But that doesn't mean it's something you aim for. Come on, say, I need to live out my days. Beat the flesh. Beat the devils. Beat the family curse. Get healed. Get happy. Go with a smile. The eagle dies with his face in the sun. It's the only bird that dies with his face facing the sun. That's how an eagle gives up its life. That's what we're compared to. They that wait upon the Lord will mount up with wings like an eagle. Don't quit fighting. Don't give in to this that has you maybe here today. I'll tell one last story, then I'm going to pray for you, take an offering, whatever here today. But this man in Puerto Rico was 99 years old, 99. He was on the front row, thousands of people. I just walked off the stage, and I said, well, what? he's just sitting there. I knew he was older, but I didn't know he was that old. And, and he had a cane. And I said, how are we doing there today? And he said, oh, I'm doing all right. I'm coming to get my healing. I thought that was interesting, right? I said, what's wrong here, sir? He said, well, I I can't walk real good. I can't walk without this stick, and I I should be able to walk without this stick. I said, and here's what I said. I couldn't believe it. I've learned so much just by being wrong. I said, sir, you should want to go to heaven. You're 99. He had told me that. He said, he got so mad at me. He said, when I'm dead, I'll go to heaven. But when I'm alive, I want to be healed. <laughs> no. So he, he jumped up out of that chair, and he began to run without the cane. Wow. And I'm thinking, praise God. And he ran around the room. He came back. He said, I got healed, preacher. Thanks a lot. You just moved me. You moved me to release my faith. <laughs> he came back the next year, and he brought me three hankies. He said, you know, preacher, you've been on my mind for a whole year. I'm praying for you, preacher. I'm saying, you're praying for me? He said, yeah, I'm just praying for you. I went back. He was 102. He was 103. Every year I'd go back, he'd have hankies for me. And, and the Holy Spirit was telling me, this guy, you thought this guy was ready for heaven? <laughs> when this guy gets into heaven, we're going to have a, a three-day revival up here. Come on. <laughs> And I'm not ready for it. This guy's trying to help you. He's got more going right here than you do. You're ready for him to go to heaven. He's ready to live three more years, four more years. You've got to outlive your critics. I said to Oral Roberts, I was sitting with Oral Roberts. I don't know how old he was, but I said, I said, so Dr. Roberts, I said, tell me what was your most, the greatest accomplishment? Was it the university? Was it uh, your healing ministry? Was it the tent ministry? He said, Billy, my greatest accomplishment was I outlived all my enemies. <laughs> no, at the time I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. But as I get older, now I know what he was talking about. Come on. <laughs> your life means something. Your healing means something. You, you're prospering these, you're being able to pay your creditors. 
You may have to go through a season where you're breaking even. The land of even isn't all that bad. You say, I may not have enough to show for, with my, for my, all of my work. It's not that bad to, to understand. God's getting ready to blast off with you. But to get a rocket off the ground takes a lot of fire. Oh, you don't understand how much fire it takes to get something launched. And God's trying to put a fire under you, and sometimes you don't like it. You don't want to read. You don't want to talk in tongues. You have tongues, but you don't want to talk. You're, you're, you're so bold about, I got the baptism. And God's thinking, yeah, but you'll never use it. <laughs> you never pray for yourself. You never put your hands on you and say, you know, you run to the medicine cabinet. You run to the doctor over a skipping of a heart. Pray for yourself. You believe in healing. Lay hands on you. It should work on you. Whatever you want to work on other people should work on you. Yes. Come on, say, what I want to do, do with other people, with other people should, work on me. should work on me. That's what a wine taster was for. That's what Nehemiah did. He drank the wine before they gave it to the king. If he didn't die, then the king said, I'll drink it. <laughs> people want to see this. You come with something that works. You don't want a brain surgeon to work on you, and he's never, you're the first candidate he's ever had. Come on. <laughs> Put your hands up all over the place today. Did you learn something this morning? Yes. Come on, see, I'm going to prepare like crazy, like, crazy. like never before. before. I've got, got to invest more time and thought and, thought. and, energy, and energy into the things that I so desire. Into the things I, so desire. I have to find out if I'm blowing smoke. Or am I breathing fire? I got to know. The days ahead may be rough. I've got to be ready. I've got to be ready to be healed on the spot. I've got to be ready to release healing on the spot. I've got to begin to believe I can prosper. I may not need the money. I may not need an extra car. There may be somebody I know does. Maybe somebody in my family needs me to sow something to them. I got to quit thinking just about me. Nothing evolves all around me. This is all about him, his love, his grace, his power working through me. I declare today, I'm getting ready for a miracle in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, give him praise today. Give him a mighty, mighty, mighty shout today. Woo. Now hold your hands up. We're going to do a group prayer this morning for healing, a group prayer. It's 1220, and I know they have, we've already exceeded our time limit. And, and that's okay, because we're getting ready for tonight. So that means the time you have today around the grounds here, or if you're coming off of the, off of the, onto the grounds from somewhere, use the rest of today. Don't just waste and say, I'm going tonight. Use the rest of the day. Rehearse some of your favorite healing scriptures. Remember the times that God was faithful to you. You know, um, maybe sing, maybe listen to something. Pull up an old CD or an old eight, eight cassette track. Whatever you have. David had five stones. I don't think it's because Goliath had four brothers. I believe David saw the size of the giant and thought, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know if one stone will do it. I might need more stones than just one. So it's important today that you don't know what it's going to take. It may take a little more preparation on your part. My grandmother spent five days, four days with me before I went to Catherine's, and all she said was, when she touches you. When, I didn't know how to get ready for a miracle. I had days to live, fighting for my life. I didn't understand all this, but she said, when she touches you. When I was in that meeting and I saw Miss Coleman's hand coming towards my head, I could hear my grandmother's voice. I could see Catherine's hand, but I could hear her voice. They both were equal. 
here comes the hand. Here's my grandmother's voice. When she touches you. And that hand hit my head. I fell and four rows of people fell with me. Four rows. Oh, my gosh. I'm praying that his presence be on you today. I'm praying today you show up and say, I had problems, but something happened throughout the day. I'm ready for them to go today. Cancer, growth, some of the thought life here has to change. You have to tell some people, I can't hang out with you for a while. Why? Did I do something wrong? No, it's just God doing something in me. I need to just change some of the scenery. You've got to say no to some of the stuff you're feeding your mind with on television. Some of these people just keep the pot stirred. They do nothing for you. And when you're fighting all your stuff, they're not there for you. Yet they planted all these seeds of corruption. The Bible says this is the incorruptible seed. It's the only seed that will not corrupt you. It will go down inside of you and fight and start killing all the incorruption. That's what this does. That's why getting it inside of you is so vital. Come on, put your hands up today. Come on, say, I'm going to receive here this morning the healing power of the Holy Spirit in my whole being, mostly in my soul. Oh, my soul needs help. Jesus said in Matthew 24, possess ye your own soul. I got to get my mind under control. My emotions, I got to get under control. Something has to be different on the inside of me for me to expect change. I got to have change. I know it can happen. It's been promised to me. It has been escaping me, but no more. I declare in front of everybody today, I'm about to be a brand new individual. I'm going to stand in the shadow of all the great people that God's bringing my way. I'm going to learn, learn, learn. I'm going to learn so much. It's going to amaze even myself. I'm getting ready for transformation, for deliverance, for change, to be healed, to be happy, and to be made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give him a thunder of ovation. Thank you, Lord. Be seated for a moment and take an envelope in your hand and just sow with expectation today as unto the Lord. You know, I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying, and I need to deliver this to you. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Some have been troubled because you've not had the hands of man laid upon you. But this day, I've touched your heart. I've touched your mind. Faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord. And my spirit is in this house. My spirit is in you and all around you. Receive the incorruptible word of the Lord today. And let your heart, let your mind, let my spirit in you be awakened to what I am doing. What I am doing. For I have touched you. Receive. Receive. From the Lord your God. Receive from the Lord your God. Just take a deep breath right now. Holy Spirit, we receive. I receive. I receive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, anytime somebody gives up, a man or woman just a special anointing to lead people to a place of receiving healing, deliverance, miracles. You know, they're constantly reminding us, get your eyes off man, Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus because God's glory is here and that's what you want to receive from. Amen. So prepare yourself right now and uh, you know how it's done. There is a QR code on the envelope if some of you are knowing how to do that with your smartphones. But you can go old school 
and use the uh, envelope as well for credit card giving or checks cash. We want to receipt you properly for your giving. By the way, lunch is available to you to eat right here on campus in the Agape Gardens dining room. You can go out any door and head that direction. It's the next building over. And uh, this afternoon, as Pastor Billy has said, find a spot, find a bench, find a place to just prepare for the rest of this day. And um, just know that so much of what you're going to receive from the Lord depends on, on just where you're at. Come with expectation and um, just believe that all things are possible. Let's say that. All things are possible. Jesus said, if you can just believe, believe. And we're having our hearts prepared for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Remember, too, that uh, in this lobby, if you came in this lobby, go out that lobby. And Pastor Billy has a table there with some resources. And um, also um, make sure and stay informed of everything else that's going on around here that you can come back for because we just want this place this is a place it's a place of his presence we steward his presence here so you can receive from the lord so father we thank you we have the opportunity lord to sow into your kingdom what you're doing and lord you said give it shall be given back father i pray lord let there be a prosperity blessing upon your people in this hour so that we can be a blessing. We give seed to the sower, Lord, so we can have more seed to sow into the work of the Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the ushers are passing the, the buckets here, and then we'll be dismissed. I want to announce, too, like I did last night, we have a 24-hour prayer room right here. And by the way, pray for uh, the flaps on your envelopes, they get cut off and put in that room and prayed over every day. If you've got a prayer request, write it out on an envelope. You can do that tonight in your giving, and it'll go in the prayer room. If you've got a praise report, write it out. And like I said, Sunday... Um, I'm going to give time for just testimonies, Ooh. and especially of what God has done today, last night in your life, so you can declare and decree, give the devil a headache, and keep that healing, and make it a part of your, it's your most authentic sermon, what God has done for you today, not 30 years ago when you got saved, is he still doing things for you today, inquiring minds want to know, mm -hmm. and uh, if you've got a uh, praise report you can put it on this flap it'll go in there too in a different bowl and we want to celebrate what the Lord has done hallelujah pastor yes. would you mind when everybody's dismissed I just sense there's a few people here that I need to pray for okay. I just sense some real needs here praise so the they can be dismissed but I'm going to I'm not going to be long because I have to rest for tonight as well but I, I do want to touch a few people down here that I okay. believe Praise need God. to walk in the healing this afternoon. Amen. And those people, you know who you are. Yeah. So ushers, are we ushering? You got it. Okay. Up over there. Sit. Thank you. Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom, his empowerment. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Those of you watching, try to get out tonight if you can. It's okay. better to be in the house if you're within driving okay. distance. I see him right there. Otherwise, we will Thank be streaming you. again tonight, 7 o'clock. God bless you, everybody. You're dismissed. He was wounded for our transgression. Come on, let's stand. He was prayed. Come on. He was bruised, he was bruised for our iniquities. Surely, come on, surely, surely able, high.